Devo returns to the Arkansas Razorbacks, and the Arkansas Razorbacks return to the win column as they defeat the Georgia Bulldogs by a score of 78-75. to This is Arkansas Basketball Recap. I'm Daniel Price. That's Jacob Price here to recap it all. Arkansas gets that dub. Uh, that's good. Uh, now eight games left. If you can win all of those, you might just sneak into the tournament. Uh, they are uh, sitting at a record of 12 and 11. Hey, if you can get to 20 and 11, I mean, you can dream, right? Uh, this game was, uh, a, a good game. I mean, you, you got to watch a game that was, that was pretty entertaining. It was a good game. It was close down the stretch. Uh, Devo did make his return. He did not start, but played almost the whole game. Uh, after the, I don't know how, what is his minutes. He played, uh, 35 minutes. So he didn't start, but played, came in and I don't know if he ever went out again, uh, started the second half. Uh, yeah, th- this game got a little nerve wracking down the end. Uh, felt like Arkansas was in control most of the game. Uh, we did miss four consecutive free throws, uh, down a pivotal stretch, which gave Georgia kind of a chance. But uh, and Devo did have one turnover the entire game. He actually played very within himself, uh, and it was at a bad time. Uh, fortunately, Georgia was not able to capitalize on that. And yeah, and Arkansas comes away with the win. Um, these games are harder and harder to break down. Uh, you're hesitant to ever say that they found something or like this is the turning point. It feels like you're too deep into the season for that. Uh, I mean, most coaches will say that the goal is to get better in February. Like, if you're going to be good, I mean, most teams are that are saying that are like teams are expecting to make the tournament. And they would say, hey, you want to keep getting better and better in February. But that probably stands for any team, unless you're really willing to just mail it in and throw in the towel on the season, which I don't think Musk wants to do. And I don't think the players want to do that. So I don't know if they're if there's anything like real substantial here, other it's actually more confusing than anything. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, L Ellis starts, he plays a ton of minutes um, after not playing Wait, at we're, all. We're, we're, I was going to say, weren't we just talking about how we have no idea what, you know, like he just not there and battles not there and our, our battle played really hard for a little bit and then didn't play the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's confusing. I mean, this game it was um, Lawson. Lawson starts, plays a couple of minutes, on for the rest of the game. Well, you here's know? here's what you got. You got Lawson, Ellis, Blocker, Davenport, Mark. Those are your starters. Lawson plays seven minutes. Blocker starts, plays six minutes. Davenport starts, plays three minutes. That's weird. I mean, I don't know what that's about. Like, that's weird. Uh, Mark starts plays 39 minutes. Ellis starts plays 37 minutes. You expect that from Mark. Ellis plays 37 minutes out of nowhere, starts out of nowhere. Your three other starters, you don't like it, ever put them back in the game after they start. And you know, instead, you know, Menefield plays 31 minutes, Devo plays 35 minutes, Mitchell plays 25 minutes. Can we stop pretending like Makai Mitchell's not the starting? Why don't you just start him? I don't Why is he up like, now? Just start him, man. Like, I mean, he's he's gonna play more minutes than these guys any i don't i don't know it's it, it is weird it would i mean it's it's becoming so typical that it's hard to say it's unusual at this point but it's it's unusual based on what muscleman has typically done which is play around with the rotation for the first five to ten games then usually has it relatively locked up who the starting five is and who the sixth man is and then who the two subs that are relieving guys here and there and getting 10 minutes apiece but this one is bizarre because he, it, I just can't figure out what his protocol is. And I wish he would like, not that it really, it's not an important detail, but it does, it says something, it feels a little disorganized. And I would like to, it would be nice if he would be like, listen, this is what I'm doing. Basically, whoever practices hardest gets to start. Like, well, okay. he, well, I like, did, that's I, that, that, that is a way to do it. And it's like, or he I did say that about based. Ellis. They asked him why Ellis started. He said he was. They said he he was like looking good in practice, practiced hard, was doing all the things. I guess if I guess if you're maybe if you're at the point where you're just like I don't know, dude, I've tried everything. I'm just gonna I like this is my new thing for the rest of this but, for the rest I mean, of this season. Lot- I just start whoever's whoever practices the hardest starts. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, and there's a little bit of like maybe maybe Makai Mitchell doesn't practice hard. I don't know, but he sure plays hard. So it's 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 hard to wonder. I mean, it's hard to imagine 
he's not practicing decently hard enough because he's performing better than any of the other guys consistently yeah. in, in the ways that you want a big to perform, which is he's a, a, playing an physical. anchor. He's an anchor on defense and rebounding down the block. And he's also has, you can tell he just has a better intuition of the offensive game as far as he's not as talented as Graham, uh, but he's more, that if you want to do one-on-one post up, but he's better for your offense in setting screens, getting to the soft spots, doing the right passing. He's way better, obviously. Um, so yeah, it's, and also he has seniority over yeah. most of the guys and it's weird that he doesn't start whatever though. I mean, it, well, how about this? this is, it, I mean, this is, there's two other things that are weird. I mean, if you just look at 10 guys played, uh, but really, I mean, like it's funny. So like 10 guys played, but Devonport plays three minutes, Battle plays three minutes. So now you're down to eight guys, right? Like, which is more in the realm. But then you're like, Blocker played six minutes, Lawson played seven minutes. Like, that, not really. Like, really, the guys that played, played a lot of minutes. You had Ellis, Mark, Mitchell, Menafield, Davis. And then sort of Graham was like that six man uh, kind of role. Uh, and he comes in and gives you, gets you 14 minutes. So he, it's weird because in a way, in a sense, like must did what he does, which is he played, he really played seven guys. I mean, mm-hmm. he really played six guys with some other guys like kind of here and there, but even then Gra- some of Graham's minutes didn't like Graham was tearing that, like tearing them up in the first half. Like, like Graham in those 14 minutes. And I know, they ended up going to his own, and then maybe must just felt like that, that that didn't work, and that I think that probably was what it was. Is that they went to his own to stop them from being able to do that with Graham because because Graham is a one on one kind of player. Like you want to get it mm-hmm. to him, like and so when they went zone, must switched it up, went went small, you know, and put more guards out there. That's probably the right thing to do. But Graham in his fourteen minutes has eleven points, you know, his four seven had three rebounds, like. He was pretty efficient in the 14 minutes he got. Yeah, and, and but not and and a little bit of that might be fool's gold as far as like you, you might look at that and go, why didn't he play more? But if you were watching it, like first off, several of those were fouls and he and he actually did make his free throws, which was good. But you could tell too, like he also in that time had a few turnovers and a couple of those were like, that wasn't a great move. You almost traveled. They probably could have called a walk. And instead you got fouled because you just basically chucked it up and threw your body out there. And even some of the ones that went in now, he had two or three that were great looking his, his smooth in step, you know, hesitate little push shots. But a couple of the ones that went in too were also like kind of junk and could have just as easily, like they weren't great looks. He kind of just forced it. So I do think like, even in as effective as he was, some of it was like, you know how it is. Like, you know, when you make a shot and you're like, well, that, Maybe it wasn't the best shot, but I'm glad it went in. And versus when you're like, oh, I did exactly what I wanted to do. And some of those were a little messy. So uh, I, I mean, it's that it's that combined with but when they went zone, though, like Graham's not a zone buster. Graham can't shoot. Like mm. like getting Graham the ball in the high post on the zone doesn't do anything. You know, mm-hmm. you know like he's not a, he's not a great passer and he's not and he doesn't want that shot. So like you're like, well, you're you're not, Mitchell has a better. 12 foot jump shot. Yeah, you, he's not going to be your your well what they did is they just went small too and and uh you're kind of running Mark up in the high post. I mean Mark was basically playing to four, you know, when they mm-hmm. went small and that I mean, that was a good move by Muscleman. That worked pretty good. Uh and then he played yeah, I would Men- say... he played he played Menafield a bunch. And by the way, Menafield, I mean, this is the thing that's crazy. Is like LL like if I'm good if I'm going player of the game, to me, the two guys I have to debate for player of the game where L. Ellis and, and Keon Menafield, I'm probably going to give it to Menafield. Uh, but that's so, <laughs> so weird. <laughs> like, that's what you, like, who was it? Yeah, like, I don't know. It's probably Menafield or Ellis. And that's, that's wild. Like, you're talking about two guys mm-hmm. that you have, you, you, if neither, if one of them would have not played zero, if they would have played zero minutes, it wouldn't have surprised me. Yeah, no, I mean, both of them have had whole games in like the, the last four games where they haven't seen the floor. So um, I, I think, yeah, like there's not a lot to say as far as the overall um, aspect. Obviously, a win is a win. You'll take it. Season still in the crapper. You still have almost no chance of doing anything in the postseason. But 
if you're an Arkansas fan and you want that little flicker of hope in your heart of the magical somehow pull it out from nowhere, like you you can say, I mean, they kept that alive. You could see some reason for hope. I mean, if you're being pessimistic, you'd go, yeah, come on. I mean, you barely beat a flagging Georgia team at home. That's not, you know, that doesn't. And and you're right. Like you can't take that data point, that victory in the manner that it was won and go, this is going to, this is a step forward or this is the step in the right direction. I mean, that's, and, and like I said, it wasn't even a, it was a very basic game. As far as you look at the score, there was some good defensive play. There was some bad defensive play. There was some good offense. There was some bad offense. We had turnovers. They had turnovers. We had some dumb plays. Um, we, you know, almost lost it a few times. I mean, if I was a Georgia fan, I was, especially the first half, I was looking at that through Georgia fans' eyes. I mean, I would have been beside myself. The way that they played the first half, and credit to our defense, we played good defense on the perimeter, especially. But you're going, you, you're, if there's, if we're a Georgia podcast, we're going, you got to have that. You're on a four game losing skid. You're going, I know it's on the road, but you're at a one of the third weakest team in the SEC that is or not doing well, is all discombobulated. You got to go in there and get a victory. You can't play like that the first half. I mean, dude, they they scored what twenty nine points or something in the yeah. first half. And but anyway, I mean, I don't think you can really take much, but there is still if you can take anything, I think it's that because they, like I said, they didn't. Some guys played decent at times, but like I said, Evo had a big mistake. He also, I mean, he also gave up that three where he went under the screen. And that guy hit that three. I have no idea why he went under that screen. Hey, Devo took um, one. Devo took one shot the whole game and made it. And he also, he, had, um, he, also he also has he also had four rebounds, three assists, two steals. He did only and he only turned it over once. It was a it was a bad time, but uh, well, he seemed he seemed Devo seemed very much like I'm going to come out here. I'm going to play defense. I'm going to like he was. Uh, it was good that he didn't try to do too much. I think. Well, and I don't know exactly what I'm talking about because I've not been in, obviously, in the locker room. But the way I perceive it, and you tell me what you think, the main thing that I would say I'm encouraged slightly about, and this could fall apart next week, but one of the main problems with this team seems to me to be they don't seem very connected interpersonally. It doesn't feel like a brotherhood the way some of the other teams have. It feels a little bit like everybody's disappointed with themselves and with everybody else. And they're all disappointed in the way that the coach feels about them and the fact that they're having to earn their minutes. So like, I mean, you know what I mean? They're on a razor's edge with their playing time. And it feels like even the fact that Menafield got, uh, you know, green lit halfway through the season and he came in and there was a little bit of a sense for a few games, like, Oh, thank God we might actually have a point guard. And like, I'm reading into this, but it felt like, Ellis has got to be bummed about that. You know what I mean? And when you sit there, when the camera cuts to Ellis, when Menafield's doing well, it feels like a little bit like, I don't know. It, ju it just feels like, and the same thing with Battle. Battle's not getting minutes for, you know, maybe Davenport and stuff. And this game, more than any other game, I felt like, and, and some of it just has to do with the fact that Menafield and Ellis haven't really played together hardly at all. And mm -hmm. I like them playing two smaller point guards which is kind of a bummer but they showed that it's possible to play decent at least adequate defense i mean and like i said maybe maybe georgia's personnel allows for that and other teams won't but those guys seeing ellis like seeing menafield bring up the ball trigger the action have it go down pop out to the corner and ellis hit the three and then those two guys best bumping each other it felt like that hasn't really been like having that um, competitiveness against one another for playing time or like who's going to be the point guard. And and even I was watching Davenport. He's been good. The, I feel like he's been a good teammate the whole time as far as enthusiasm. But there was I felt like there was a little bit more connection mm -hmm. and, and more team um know more of a familial team atmosphere to what was happening on the court and not as much kind of hanging of your head slumping of your shoulders like they look like they're actually picking each other up you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and that to me i think that 
I mean, like I said, it could fall apart next week. Devo could punch Ellis in the face. <laughs> like, I mean, who knows? But if you're going to even hope for any kind of a run here or a fun season at all, I think that's a like actually an underrated thing. You gotta have your guys playing for one another. Yeah. You have to you have to I mean you've been on teams where you get on a team and there's a guy on there that you don't like, maybe him personally, and you or maybe maybe you don't have a problem with him personally, but you hate his game. You don't like the way he plays. He doesn't play with you. He's selfish. He's just shoot he's a ball hog. He's a shooter. He doesn't you can you know that he doesn't respect your game, so he doesn't get you the ball where you need it and stuff. It's like the difference between that and you really, really rooting for the guy in your team to score and like going and setting him picks and being willing to like sacrifice yourself to get a rebound and get it to him. You know what I mean? Like it's it it's got it's so much better. It's so much better for the team. It's so much better for them to play like it's easier to play with, with passion and with uh enthusiasm when you genuinely are not thinking when Ellis hits a three, shit, that's that that makes him look good and that's that means the coach is gonna that's those are yeah. my minutes going away versus hell yeah i don't care let's all you know we're all on this th- in this thing together and like i said i felt like anything you can take from this game that's what i took from is maybe that's starting to happen and those guys are starting to click with each other as friends and as you know interpersonally and at least being able to root for one another and like I said, I might be wrong about all of that analysis, but that's just the way it appears from the thousand foot view. What do you think? Uh, yeah, no, I felt like that. I think that you could tell that's the case because one of the things I thought was better this game uh, was I thought the ball moved pretty well, uh, which I thought was good. Uh, like the like we got we got like some good clean looks, which we struggled to get clean looks. We we complained about this, and I thought like we got some really clean looks at the and that, that was well, nice. Well, it looks like it looks like they'd practice playing offense against a zone. Like you know how yeah. those those guys look. You could tell they caught the ball, and they would dribble into the double team before they passed it. And yeah. you know what I mean? They're like they're looking they're looking like okay, I have to bring those guys over. And then get it back. And sometimes it was just literally ping pong. It was like, okay, now you yeah. two come over here. I'll pass it to that guy. And then eventually, when somebody got them moving fast enough, they would m- make their move. And then you could tell that looked like it was practiced and not just, oh, they went to zone, timeout. Here's how we want to do it, like in the moment. You know yeah, what I mean? I think, I, think like... the, I think the last couple of games, too, it seems that Muss has like really encouraged them not to hunt the three, which is good. Like the, the threes that we're taking, I feel like are all good threes uh we're not like doing these like you know shimmy sidestep you you know fade away with the exception of that one that menafield took and made though yes uh, if you make it i guess it's it's okay but uh but yeah so not it, we're not doing that so i think that's good um you know and obviously georgia didn't look did one they didn't shoot the ball great the first half but uh you are talking about a team that does make a lot of threes and we, I felt like maybe some of it's just like, hey, they didn't have a good night. But I think some of it too was felt like we did, we did a pretty good job guarding guarding the three. Uh, better, well, they got better. they got dude. They were winning the first five minutes, and actually, you know, I mean, I think I think it was like nineteen to ten for a yeah. second, and then we went on like a 10-0 run and took the lead. But that was very frustrating. Those first twenty points that they got. I mean, they even said it on the broadcast. Like they were like all layups. Yeah, they were just they were just laying in. But dude, I mean, you know, when we play ball, so, like especially when you're playing ones and twos, and the three pointer is worth a hundred percent more instead of fifty percent more. Um, or it's not fifty percent, but or yeah, I mean, like whatever it is, or yeah, fifty yeah. percent more. Yeah, and uh, we always are like, well, we got to overplay the two now. And there's you just sometimes when you overplay the two, the three. You gotta you you know you're risking yeah. giving up. Uh, the, dribble, the yeah, you're, you're giving up dribble drive, yeah, for sure. I mean, I also thought that like, and I don't think that's a bad strategy. I mean, I don't know what Mus thought, but like the idea that Mus is like, hey, even when we try, we can't stop the dribble drive no matter what. Yeah. So there's no chance we're gonna take away the three and the drive. So let's just take away the three. I mean, that's a risky strategy because obviously even a good three-point shooting team, the three-point is a, a lower percentage shot and a layup is a high percentage shot, but it did work. 
They yeah, got and, them and, out of their game. Well, and, you, and, you, and, you know, I think when you have Makai down there, you know, hopefully you got some rim protection and stuff, and he's a he's a big guy to go dribbling into. Uh, I thought, too, like the turnovers, that like we had 12 turnovers, which is not bad, but I thought that you have to remember, uh, Must brought this up, and I was thinking it beforehand because I saw I saw 12, and I was like, man, we had 12. I didn't feel like we turned the ball over very much. He's like, like, four of those were like stepping out of bounds or catching the ball on the sideline and stuff. That was crazy, dude. And that's, but the thing about that is like, those are like the best turnovers you could have. Right. They so are. like, so you're like, oh, we had 12 turnovers. Like, yeah, you really only had eight and like, no, like hardly any of them like were like live, you know, like. No, down. I think they only, I saw, I think I saw it flash on the screen at the end. I think they had eight points off of turnovers. Yeah. And off of our 12 turnovers. And we had like 18. Yeah, off of their turnovers. Yeah, and they only turned it over like fourteen times, like two more times than us. But their turn. That's the thing about turnovers is they're not all equal. Like they, Georgia turned the ball over in much worse ways than we did, and mm-hmm. uh, and so the, I was glad to see that because we have had some like bad turnovers uh, in this you know so far this season. We, and I felt like that was cleaned up a little bit. So that's good because I think if you are going to like try to be competitive in games. That's some of the stuff you have to do. I mean, for sure, you can't you can't turn the ball over a ton. This team can't afford to like turn the ball over a ton because they're not like so good offensively that they can that they can uh, afford to do that. Uh, the other thing is, you know, uh, you know, we won the rebounding battle just by one, but that so I mean, whatever is basically even. But for this team, which it, most games we have gotten beat on the boards and sometimes beaten badly on the boards the last couple of games, it seems like we've done, we've done better at that. And so we're rebounding better. I think we're moving the ball better. If we're taking care of the ball better, I agree with you that they look like they're enjoying playing together more, uh, maybe with the exception of battle. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but um, I think all that's good stuff. Well, now like, you know, we might come out and just, I think we have a Tennessee next. Um, you know, we might be just we might just get wrecked, you know. And Tennessee um, didn't Tennessee Tennessee just got slapped, yeah, by A and M. That was it A and M. Let's see, let me see here. Um, I think, it, I think it was. Yeah, they just got slapped by Texas A and M, dude. They I I couldn't believe it. I turned on that game and I I I thought for sure it was the first half because Tennessee had thirty one points and there was twelve minutes to go. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of yeah, points they, in the first 10 beat. minutes. And I was like, oh, no, that's a, not very many points in the first 30 minutes. There was all kinds of weird stuff that happened. I mean, uh, so, yeah, Tennessee A&M beats Tennessee 85 to 69. And, and it was worse than that. Uh, and then Florida just slaps Auburn all over the court and, uh, yeah, and, beat, and, and beats them 81-65. And it was worse than that. Uh, they were just slapping them all over the place, and so, yeah, yeah that, that's I mean, you know, none, not surprising. Uh, Mississippi State beats Missouri, and uh, South Carolina smacks around Vanderbilt, but um, Alabama scores a hundred, drops a hundred and nine on LSU. <laughs> I, they, I think that's their sixth or seventh game this year where they've broken a hundred. Uh, I so, know I heard it was the most, most hundred point games, uh, in a season since kentucky in like 1995 or something like that and by the way the season's not over yet yeah uh yeah so we got uh we got tennessee at home it's nice it's a home i guess uh on wednesday but so who knows who knows man i mean like like tennessee is uh, is great defensively and uh we'll see and then you got two road games uh you got to go at mississippi state at texas a&m then you're home for Missouri and Vanderbilt, so that's good. Uh, kind of wish we could flip that, but can we get to some of these other games at home? And uh, we'll, I'll go to Vanderbilt. That's fine. But uh, and you wrap up with at Kentucky, LSU at home, and at Alabama, and so it's you know it's it's tough. It's tough, dude. I mean, like I said, it's going to take a lot more than brotherly congeniality feelings to get us to beat. You know, go into Rex and Kentucky and Kentucky and Alabama. And I mean, any hope to beat any of those good because Georgia's not bad, but they are definitely the second tier. Yeah. 
you know, from these, the, the top four teams in the SEC are, I don't know if our personnel can, can beat them, honestly. Uh, and no matter how effective they play, but whatever, we'll be here for it. Yeah. All right, man. Let's just leave it there. Uh, everyone enjoy the Super Bowl. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we'll be back. We'll make some predictions. I mean, are you going to release this before this? So, yeah, we're doing this on Sunday morning because. Yeah, I'll, we I'll, I'll, I'll release it before the night. Super Bowl. No one will watch it before then. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a prediction. I didn't watch enough NFL this year to have like a real solid prediction. I mean, I feel like the, the mood is kind of obviously pro Kansas City, but. Yeah, and, and I, I'm not a huge NFL fan. I mean, because when the Bears are bad, and by the way, they've been bad for 25 years, you know, my whole life, basically, uh, with the exception of one fluke year where Rex Grossman somehow yeah. lucked us with a 10-win season into the Super Bowl. Um, by the way, Peyton Manning, for as good as he was, dude, his Super Bowls are not that impressive. He beat <laughs> the, like, 10-6 and six Bears with Rex Grossman at quarterback for his first Super Bowl and then literally just like sat on his defense's back and rode them Denver to their Super Bowl. Like uh so definitely not as impressive as his regular season career. I mean that's obviously everybody knows that. But um yeah I mean I'm a little I have to admit I'm a little bit bitter about the Bears not taking freaking I mean taking Trubitsky when they <laughs> trading up to take Trubitsky when they could have just taken Mahomes. That's I mean obviously hurts pretty bad uh and i'm i'm inclined i've always been a lit i mean bear, i'm a bears fan kansas city i've always liked kansas city because i like trent green i liked joe montana when i was a kid and when he came there i thought it was cool um they're, they're you know they're relatively close um but and i like andy reed i thought he was mistreated and not as appreciated as he should have been in uh philadelphia and i was happy when they won their first super bowl and now I'm sick of it. I'm sick of I'm sick of their winning. I'm sick of a guy that's like a never not been in the playoff, like the championship game in his whole career. And like I'm over well, it. And, and dude, that, what about that, what about Brock Purdy too? Guys, well, guy, like the, the, guy makes like the, the ten dollars a year pick. or whatever in NFL money. And the last still... pick. This is gonna. By the way, this is gonna alienate all of them. All, like ninety percent of Arkansas fans are Kansas City fans. But uh, yeah, I, I don't like. I don't have any real love for the 49ers, But I don't have any of the LA team or of the California teams. I think that they. I do have the like in my mind, in my imagination, they're the coolest just because of you know Montana and Rice and stuff. So uh, I don't have any hate for them. I think Purdy's a great story. I get. I think I'm kind of rooting for Purdy. And, and honestly, I mean, Kansas City, dude, their weapons, like what, what Mahomes is doing with just a tight end. Yeah. That's what he's got. He's got yeah. he's got a tight end and a couple of guys, like name a Kansas City receiver. Now, I know we're not like super, Tony, but like Tony, but he's just they're, famous for they're not all, being able to catch the ball. Yeah, they're all gone. So the fact that they're doing it, but I also think, you know, maybe that could come back to bite them and they might come down to earth and realize like the team with the more weapons is going to win and Kansas city is light on weapons and maybe Kelsey is enough. And I mean, they're running back and, and their defense is just good enough, but I think I'm going to pick the 49ers partially. Cause I think I prefer that. And, but whatever, you know, I, I, the Taylor I, Swift I, I, thing he, is kind of annoying, but I mean, I think it's you know obviously much ado about nothing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Look, I of just, course, the NFL as an incentive to and these, flash to her and her because, dude, like, it's good for their yeah, of course. Know, bottom line. No, that part's weird. It's like they keep showing her. It's like, yeah, well, that's because she's like one, like the, like the top five most famous people on earth. Like, so and like, just yeah. and her fan base has brought. Yeah, it's so big. It's brought revenue yeah. just by that. Like, of course, they're going to go to that. Like, yeah. and it's. I mean, whatever. It's not. I, I heard some comedian like it's funny because it, it did start where it's like I'm I'm with everybody when it started. At first, you're like. This is infuriating. Stop flashing to the girlfriend of the guy. Like what? The, I'm here to watch football. And then the ire got so loud that it's like, okay, guys, calm down. Like, I mean, eat a chip while they're flashing to her. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not torturous. Like, get over it. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't really care. I mean, in games like this, though, in games where I don't have a dog in the fight, like in Super Bowls, uh, like, well, I'm, I, I just end up rooting for a good game. 
right? Yeah, no, that's I mean that's yeah. ulti- that's ultimately what I want. Like is like uh, I don't really care about either of these teams, and so you know then you just start rooting for like, well, this ha- maybe it'll be epic. Like, can we root for like a like a great Super Bowl? That's that's what you root for. Yeah, would it would it be would it hurt my feelings if you know Kelsey was running down with a f- with a football, got hit in the stomach, pooped his pants on TV, and then George Kittle caught the winning touchdown, and Taylor Swift came down and like jumped into Kittle's arms, and you know, like no, that would be that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but at the same time, you know. I'll feel good for Andy Reid, I guess. I I, I still yeah. like Andy Reid. Maybe, maybe, maybe Travis will propose right there at the 50-yard line. It'd be great. That, you can bet on that in Vegas. <laughs> Dude, it probably will, because I got to admit, Kelsey, and I don't have anything against him. Dude, he's a great player. He he annoys me a little bit. He's just like him. Like He's just kind of derfy. Even when he's doing like the Aaron Sachs commercials, it was just always kind of goofy. Dude, dude, but like, there is something weird. Like Jason Kelsey is ridiculously likable. I, I don't have a problem with either one of them. I mean, yeah. but I mean, it's cool. I, I, maybe it's just like, look at what we do. And our like, there is something like, uh, if you ever like see their podcast and stuff, it is like, Oh, it's like brothers. Like they're, they're football brothers. And you're like, I can, I can like that where you're like, it's cool that you guys have like a really good relationship. And like you, they, they seem like they, they really like each other. They hang it. You know, they, they, you can tell, you can tell like these two dudes, like probably they're probably, yeah. actually, they're probably freaking a blast to hang out with. And yeah, I mean, we never talk about politics on this thing, but I mean, the fact that like the sort of right wing people are like, I mean, I get, I guess, cause he did a Pfizer commercial or mm-hmm. something, but the fact that like, dude, I, I actually do look at like when, when Taylor Swift is like, kind of like in the booth, like, yay for this masculine, like boyfriend who's like slamming footballs into the end zone. I'm like, shouldn't conservatives love this? Like, this is like. <laughs> It's like the most wholesome thing ever. It's like the girl next door started as a country singer turned biggest pop icon in the world singing. I mean, as pop music goes, I know it's all about boys and heartbreak, but like, it's not overly risque. Like a lot of stuff, it's relatively wholesome. And now she's got this freaking football player, jock boyfriend, and he's got a brother that he gets along with. It's like, it's wholesome family, American values. You know what I mean? Although I get it. They also annoy me. <laughs> like it is annoying. I don't. It's hard to even put your finger on why it's so annoying, but it is. But you know, there you go. Every. every I mean, everything's annoying. Is any can anything be uh, any more without it being annoying? To it first, it starts. Then one group gets annoyed. Then the other group gets annoyed. Then I'm annoyed with everybody, the whole thing, both sides. You know what I mean? It is. So. I, I think. Every, I think. I don't think anyone's listening now. I think we're. I think. I think you're just talking to me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna right. do this is, this is what hogs podcasts are gonna be dude it's not fun to be bad i don't want to be bad i want to it's not team. it's not fun at all uh, mm. I'm, I'm ready for next season that's what i'm ready yeah, for dude. i mean the football season good lord I'm not. Right. I mean, I'm just gonna be a terrible summer because you know the summers summers are horrible for sports. You're just gonna be. Uh, well, that's not true. I'm just gonna. I'll just be like all about that travel basketball. Got yeah, the kid I mean, to I'm travel not, basketball. That's all. Like that. That would give me something to do. I'm like no doubt gonna be watching like more postseason. Hopefully, uh, ladies basketball. Like I'm gonna be watching the hopefully the the Lady Hogs, and I'll probably be watching Iowa too because that whole story is. Yeah. Why fun. not? Yeah. So. I mean, I'm going to watch the tournament. I mean, I'm going to watch yeah, March Madness, of course. I mean, of course I am. But all right, bro. But there's something, there is something about watching the men's tournament, especially if the Hogs aren't in it. And if the season just looks like what it's going to do, it's like, yeah, drink versus, the whole time. Yeah, it's just like everything about it's kind of like a bummer. <laughs> but yeah. when if you watch the ladies tournament, especially if like there's are the Hogs are in it, you can root for them. And then there's like the Caitlin Clark angle which is kind of cool and even the lsu like are is that matchup ever going to happen so there's a bunch of stuff that like actually i am interested in and and even though i'm obviously more of a fan of the men's game overall i also am sort of like bitter about it so it's like not as fun to watch other teams succeed where you are you know failing well here's the thing it's like i know some guys are like uh I did just for whatever reason I can't watch women's basketball. They can't watch girls, but like, I don't know. Like, but I feel like those guys don't have like uh, 
daughters who like play basketball. Like once you, I think that one, and, and there's some guys that, that probably don't have daughters that still enjoy it and stuff, but um, I don't know well, if you have like, if you have a daughter and she plays basketball, like it's like no, I, I have no problem watching women's basketball at all. Like I, I think that the way that people talk about it sometimes like is, over it's way overstated i mean like all this is like they're just out they don't know what they're doing like there's a lot of like just ridiculous stuff about that about that we're like it's i mean you just have to understand it it. you have to understand what you're watching like it you're not watching guys play basketball you're watching girls play basketball so it is different uh but there's if you've watched enough of it you start to realize the ways in which it's good uh and it takes different things some different things to be to have good teams and stuff you know like it's 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 not a different sport but it is a little bit of a different sport you know and and so watching you know my daughter's in high school your daughter's in junior high but um it's not difficult for me to watch any i can watch i can watch the arkansas state championship girls basketball game between whoever and whoever and and totally enjoy it like and for what it and be like yeah this is it's t- to me, I guess it's this. It's still good basketball. I just don't equate it to men's basketball. It's not the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame anyone for not being into women's basketball. I mean, if you're a casual basketball fan, yeah, it's slower. There's not as much excitement. Um, although, I mean, I'll say the three point line, the, the three point shooting has gotten uh, almost as good as be- because they, they can't dunk and stuff. As especially at the you know high school and college level but the three point shooting has gotten insane and, um, and they freaking shoot a ton of them, especially Arkansas. But I, yeah, I mean, I'm a sports junkie and everyone would always, I mean, I mean, I, the stuff that I, I like basketball, I mean, I've always been, I mean, I'll, I'll watch, I'll watch, I'll watch teams that I, I've, I've sat down and turned on a game and like, Oh, uh, there's, you know, there's Purdue is playing some and something like, but it's like a game that I don't really care about. And there's like, Oh, South Carolina's playing LSU in the women's game. I want to watch that. Like I'll turn it on. I'll, I've watched a game that is not the hogs. That's not even a postseason game just because it's like the number one team in women's basketball versus a competitive, you know, uh, conference team. And yeah, I mean, I, we grew up watching our sister play high school basketball. Should they one state when she was, and, and we went to a lot of, exciting environments so, of yeah i mean i don't blame anybody but because i'm not under i'm not one of these people that's under the illusion that they're this you know it's the same game but i like it and it i will say i mean i don't know what we're all talking about now but the the fact that there is this and i understand it because there's been a push for trying to make women the same as men and every the reason people don't go to those games and stuff is because they're bigots but and that's annoying and then that has the backlash effect of having people unnecessarily shit on the women's game when it's just not is that now you're the bad guy you know what i mean like the, just because somebody annoying is saying something annoying doesn't mean that you then need to um be immature and criticize the i mean women are awesome it's you know what i mean like we don't need as as i mean the feminine side of and i get it feminism is annoying sometimes but we don't want to have this adversarial relationship with women as such. I love women. I love my daughters. I love my wife. I love my mom. I love aspects of the female spirit. And and I see it out on the court. And yeah, they don't jump as high and they don't run as fast. It's fine. Yeah. I still like it. I, I They're competitive. They play hard. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. And I, and like I said, I enjoy all of the weird things that are different between men and women and men have plenty of stuff that sucks about them. And women have stuff that sucks about them. And we all have stuff. That's awesome. I know that's very hippy dippy, but yeah, this counter, this backlash to feminism where like people, a lot of men feel in the manosphere, whatever, like feel the need to unnecessarily just shit on women. Like it's, it's, I don't, I'm not into that. You know what I mean? I like, I, we need to find the middle ground where, we come back to enjoying and appreciating the differences between each other. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, this is, you know, beforehand, Jake said it'll be short. This should be short. Not a lot. There's not a lot to talk about. So we just talked about everything else. Uh, if you stick around right. to the end. Yeah. If you stick around to the end, there you go. Well, all right, man, I'll see you here in a little bit for the Super Bowl. All right, dude. See you. All right.